Welcome back. In this part of the video, we'll talk about the originality reports and how you can use it to check for originality in your students' work. So let's just pop back into this demonstration class and the classwork page. And I have a task in here called the, this um, persuasive writing task. So let's go in there. You can see this is a writing task that I've asked students to write about um, just uh, the, the best city in the world, just a persuasive writing task. Uh, and you can see two of them have uh, been assigned and not yet handed it in. Uh, six of them have already been marked. So let's just take a look at the students who have actually done the work so far. Now I have graded these students and marked them already, but we can still look at it. So let's pop in here, click on the number six, and you'll see these are the six students who have done this task. And let's just pick on this student here, Crystal. So I click on her name and it opens up and let me move myself out of the way here so you can see what's going on. So you can see that the task was to write a, um, a short uh, written response uh, sharing their reasons for which city they think is the best city in the world and why. And up in the top corner here you'll notice that it says check plagiarism, check for originality. Now let me just backtrack a step here and show you how that was set up. If I go into the way this task was actually set up, so I go into the instructions page here and look at edit. And so this is how this was set up. And you'll notice all I did was tick this box that says check plagiarism. That's it. That's all you've got to do. Seems too simple. Um, once you set a task that lends itself to a plagiarism check, uh, you tick the box and Classroom will take care of everything else. So when the student did this piece of work, they actually saw a small button on their screen. Now, I'm showing you the teacher's page here, not the student page, but the student gets a little button in the top corner that simply says, check for plagiarism. And they can click the button and it will run a plagiarism check. Now, they can run this plagiarism check three times. So typically once they've written their draft, again, once it's in progress, and again, generally before they hand it in, they can run it three times. Um, it's good to have that limit of three because it forces the students to really think about the process of writing. They can't just endlessly check. Uh, and it's also useful to know that uh, if you are in a domain which uses uh, the plus version of Google Workspace, which is the Department of Education New South Wales uses the plus edition, you have unlimited uh, use of the originality reports. You can run them on as many assignments as you like. Uh, some of the fundamentals of free versions of Workspace are limited to only five. Uh, but you get unlimited use of this uh, of this particular feature. Now, let's look at how it works. So I ticked the box when I handed this out to students. The students can run that check for themselves. Whether they run the check or whether they don't, I, as the teacher, can use that originality check when it comes back. And you can see, if I click that button here, it's off in the distance now, uh, off in the background, I mean, uh, checking for plagiarism. And what it actually does is it looks at the student's writing and then it tries to compare it to basically every web page on the internet. And you can also have it set up so that it compares against previous student work. So for example, this student might have had an older sister or an older brother who did this task when they were in this class two years ago. And they've just simply said, hey, can I borrow your assignment? And uh, it will actually check for that as well. Now, you can see it's come back here and it said there has been one flagged passage. If I click on that link, it will open up the originality report and it will tell me what has actually been plagiarized here. And you can see it's most of it. So all this stuff that's highlighted in gray, this is uh, things that have shown up in another resource somewhere on the internet. In other words, not original. Uh, and if I want to know more about that, I can, I can look at here and say, what's the percentage? 70% of this has been plagiarized. Uh, and uh, that's actually not including the heading at the top, so probably more than that. But if I come in here, I can say, well, what actually was plagiarized? There was a web match from uh, this is what the student wrote, and this is what was on the internet, and this is the website that it came from. And you can see if I click that link, it will open up that website, like so, and it will take me to the page that contained that information. Okay, so the student's just taken it. now. You know, can I blame the student? I probably should have asked the question in a different way that was less plagiarizable. So part of this probably falls on me as the teacher. Uh, but you know, that said, uh, I was asking for original work and I didn't get it. So the originality report checked for that.
for a teacher to identify necessarily that this was not original work requires normally without this check quite a lot of work you've got to first of all suspect that it might not be original and then you've got to do a whole bunch of detective work to find out why it wasn't original or where it came from the originality report does all that for you automatically all you need to do is tick the box and these reports are automatically generated so that's um, one example of how it works let's just try and find a second example here so I'll go back over to my to my class uh, list uh, I'll go back to my demonstration class the classwork page let's try this other one this persuasive writing task and you can see that some of these students have handed it in let's try a different student let's try Jack Jack has handed something in here and let's run a plagiarism check on Jack's work and you see again because I ticked that box uh, the plagiarism check is available in the top corner there it's now just checking for that plagiarism and essentially going out to the internet and checking everything or checking against the school repository if that's been turned on as well so pretty easy way to check for plagiarism um, one of the questions that we get is does this check for work that was created with generative AI so for example Google Bard or ChatGPT or something like that the short answer at the moment is no it does not and the reason it doesn't is because work that's been generated by AI is in fact original work uh, it is not necessarily something that exists somewhere else on the internet so this is quite something we need to be dealing with over the next little while is you know how do we how do we detect that sort of work um, the answer still comes back to asking students different questions. How do we ask students to not, uh, how, how do we ask students to do things that are not so easily just able to be just replicated by either plagiarism or a machine? Uh, and, and it's very possible to do that. Let's have a look at this flagged passage. This one comes up and this has been entirely lifted from somewhere else. If I click that, you can see this is basically 100% plagiarized. Uh, yeah, there you go, 100% flag content. So, um, yes, it is surprising at sometimes just how much students do just go and borrow from the internet uh, when they're trying to create work. Um, and this is a great way of detecting that originality and making sure that students are aware that they can check their own work. So I don't think students generally want to plagiarize. I think most students would prefer to think that they're being original. Uh, but sometimes when they're doing a lot of research and combining ideas together from things they find out there um, in other resources, uh, they sometimes don't realize how much they might be plagiarizing. And this is a great tool for both them to be aware and also for you as a teacher to be aware as well. So that is originality reports.